Hi, internet friends. I'm Catherine Pisani from Brown University, and today we're here to talk about chondrules. So let's get started. In the beginning, about 13.7 billion years ago, the Big Bang happened, and that brought forth our entire universe. Fast forward about 9.1 billion years, and from that chaos formed our solar system that we live in today. And forever, as we do a lot of space travel sometime soon. I'm first going to talk about impacts in general, and then go into the specific process of jetting, and how that itself is connected to chondrules. We see examples of impacts all the time in daily life, whether it's one animal running into another animal, raindrops splashing into water. It's basically whenever one mass hits another mass and there's some sort of contact. My research focuses on planetary impact. The part of the impact process that I'm especially interested in is the ejecta that is released after the collision takes place. The ejecta is the material emitted outward in a circular ring away from the collision point. A very specific part of the ejecta is called the jet. The primary qualification for jetted material is that its velocity is greater than the velocity of the impactor. The jet itself is composed mostly of target material that is getting squirted out from the contact point between the target and the projectile. It is later accompanied by material from the impactor itself that is traveling at speeds greater than that of the impactor. Once the ejecta has speeds lower than those of the impactor, it is no longer considered to be jetting. Possible results of jets are these particles called chondrules, which have been found on over 90% of all meteorites that have hit Earth. The chondrules are small lava-like tubules of accreted material. Chondrules themselves are previously molten beads in space that are accreted to asteroids. They're one of the oldest materials we have access to in the solar system in the solid state. They're primarily composed of silicate minerals surrounded by feldspathic material. They require rapid flash heating to melt the solid dust particles into one globule that reach temperatures of over 1,000 kelvins. The thermal energy source is unknown, but a possible heating mechanism is impact. For this reason, we think that the chondrules themselves could be byproducts of the planetary formation in the early days of our solar system. Since chondrules have been found at such high frequency on meteorites on Earth, we need to show that they are produced in high quantities from an impact if there is indeed a correlation between impact ejecta and chondral formation. To do this, I'll be using hydrocodes in the ICEL simulation models to produce data that will show the percent of mass that is jetted, and then of that mass that's jetted, find how great the quantity is above the threshold required to produce a chondral. Thank you so much for listening, and hopefully the results of my data will come out soon.